Creating the perfect YouTube video is what makes you different from your competitors. It's the make or break deal in determining whether or not your video gets seen by thousands of people or just by your mom and dad. By the way, hi, hi mom and dad, thanks, thanks for watching my videos. But knowing how to properly use assets and when to really use them is a lot more difficult than you might actually think it is. And this is because there are so many different factors that you need to consider when editing a YouTube video. Whether it be using the proper music, the proper sound effects, images, and videos, and etc. You want to produce the best possible result and it all comes down to how you can actually edit them. So in this video, I'm going to be explaining a three-step process to ensure that you understand how to properly use assets when editing a YouTube video. So when it comes to the first step when editing a YouTube video, you have to understand the tone and mood that you want to set for it. Knowing what tone and mood your video really needs comes down to your artist's intention when you start making the video in the beginning. And what I mean by this is that you need to understand what kind of feeling your videos want to have when watching the video. Is the video you are creating meant to be very informative? Do you want your viewers to feel a sense of shock? Do your viewers want to experience a journey when watching the video? Now these are definitely the questions that you should be asking yourself when understanding what kind of assets that you want to use in your video. Especially when you're trying to understand the tone and mood that you really want your audience to experience. Now there's a huge misconception that people and beginner editors have when creating a YouTube video. That being that the assets that you use in short form content is very similar to long form content. And I can confidently tell you that this is not the case and in no way are they ever related. Look, I get it. Short form content like YouTube Shorts, Instagram Reels, and TikTok uses a lot of fast paced assets and edits just to make sure that your attention is just stuck onto the video and you're continuously watching that video. But listen, none of that stuff ever works for a YouTube video. Like, never. The game is a lot more different when it comes to YouTube and you have to keep that in mind when editing your YouTube videos to set the tone and mood. The expectation that your viewers have when it comes to the tone and mood is a whole lot different compared to the dopamine experience with short form content. So when setting the tone and mood for your video, you have to use assets that uplift the core message. So this would mean that you have to use a lot of images and a lot of videos to help your viewers have a better visualization. Use music or audio to set the mood that you're trying to make your viewers feel. And most importantly, sound effects that emphasizes the points being made. So what I'm trying to say is that before you get started on editing a YouTube video, you really have to understand the tone and mood that you really want to set for your YouTube video. And that really dictates on what you can actually edit and what kind of assets you can include in that video. Now, after going through that one giant first step, you can finally move on to the second step. And the second step being is knowing how to properly space out your assets. And what I mean by this is that you really need to understand on when is the best time to create an edited sequence. When editing a YouTube video, you can't just spam edited sequence after edited sequence because that's just too much dopamine and it's just really overloading for the viewer. Now I'm going to be talking about short form content again even though this is a video about long form content but this is a great example on why you really shouldn't be doing this in the first place. When editing short form videos the standard is always to have the edits really fast paced and then there's a lot of jump cuts with a bunch of imagery, a lot of videos, sound effects, and really trendy audios and music. But this is again not the case for long form content. It's a whole lot different. The game is a lot more different and that's not the expectation viewers have on YouTube. Especially for those who specifically search up the problems on YouTube and stumble upon your video just by YouTube recommending it. But how can Mr. Beast or other big channels get away with using fast-paced edits in their videos? I just talked about the you don't really need fast-paced edits but here are these big channels that really do include them. Well they're really able to do this because they understand on how to actually space out and properly use their assets. When editing a video especially for YouTube it's really important to think about how you're going to keep your viewers hooked onto the video and keep them watching all the way to the end. The reason why Mr. Beast is so successful with his videos is because he uses a lot of strategically placed edits and assets to make sure he maximizes his audience's retention rate. All of his assets, including the music, images, videos, or sound effects, all work hand in hand together to promote what is being shown in the video. Of course, there are other factors to why he is really successful, but the main core principle to why his videos are doing really good is down to his editing skills. Of course, there are other great reasons why Mr. Beast is so successful, but his ability to understand when it's crucial to include a edited sequence is what makes a great YouTube video. Now, there are times in a YouTube video where you really do want that downtime so your viewers can actually digest and understand the information that is being said. If you purposely force any crazy edits into that video and just overload the viewer, then they won't really have a great watching experience. This significantly makes it harder for the viewers to even stick onto the video and most likely they would just click off and just move on to the next video. And that's not what you want when it comes to growing on YouTube. You want your viewers to stick on the video so they keep watching your content and coming back for more. But also at the same time, you don't want to upload videos that just don't have any assets or any edited sequence at all. This is because it makes the viewers a lot more 
overboard and harder to visualize what is being said in the video. This balance of knowing when to include edited sequences or when not to include edited sequences is a skill that is developed over time and it really does take some skill and practice to actually understand that. But a good general rule of thumb when it comes to including any assets or edited sequences in a video is every 30 to 45 seconds you do want to include some kind of edit or edited sequence to extend the viewer's duration or retention rate throughout the video. Now when you understand how to space out your assets and how to properly use them then this last step ties everything together for a perfect YouTube video. And this last step is understanding on how to create a perfect balance of power between using assets and not using assets. This last step heavily relates to what I just talked about in the second step because it really requires you to have that foundation knowledge on when to use assets or how to even properly use them in the first place. I've seen so many videos by so many channels that either use too many assets in one video which makes it so overpowering for the viewers to experience or just don't use any assets in the beginning. And this makes it a lot more harder to emphasize what they're actually trying to say in the video. Editing videos with assets is a game of tug of war. It's always a battle between whether you can maintain the same level of power when it comes to using assets or not using them at all. But without a perfect balance, you're going to lose a significant amount of your own viewers and this is not optimal for your own YouTube growth. Now this game of power that I'm talking about may include using too much damn loud music, the sound effects that are being included not making any sense, using too many still images, and including an extra amount of stock footage that wasn't necessary in the beginning. Like I said in my previous point, if you have so many moving objects or so many moving assets all happening at the same time, it'll make it significantly harder for your viewers to understand what that core message is that you're trying to portray in your video. Even if you have a really great video idea and a great message behind this video, if your edits make the video so distracting or just does not relate at all, then your viewers are just going to click off and that's what I'm trying to really emphasize here. Now to really prevent this power struggle or this power imbalance that you might be kind of afraid of, there's actually a power hierarchy when it comes to using these assets. With this power hierarchy, you'll understand what kind of assets actually have so much more priority than compared to the others. And I'm going to be sharing it right now with you guys. So for this hierarchy, it goes from the most powerful to the least. So I'm just going to start from the top and go from the bottom here. So one of the first assets that has the most power is music. Music has the most power because it helps set the tone and mood of the video that you're trying to make. That's why it has so much power over the other assets. It's because it easily determines on what the viewer actually feels. And that's the most important thing when it comes to editing a YouTube video. If you're able to set a great mood and tone, your viewers will be so hooked onto the video. Now the second asset on this power hierarchy are actually images and video clips. And I'm more specifically talking about if these images and videos are animated. These are next in line on the power hierarchy because it gives a visual clarity for your viewers to understand what you're actually talking about. Without it, it makes it a lot more harder for your viewers to understand and it's a lot more boring without it. And the last asset on this power hierarchy are sound effects or audio cues. And these assets are just meant to help back up all the other assets that I just mentioned on this power hierarchy. The reason why this hierarchy exists is because it helps you police on how you can effectively manage the power balance. For example, if you were to have too many loud or obnoxious sound effects, then it just clashes with the music. Or if you were to have so many fast paced like edits or videos that are just flying everywhere, but it doesn't really match up with the music, then it's just going to hurt your viewers eyes, lack for a better word. There needs to be a balance among all of the assets and you have to evenly distribute it throughout the video. Now with all these three steps being said, I'm going to be giving you an example on how you can effectively use assets when editing a YouTube video. For this demonstration, let's say that I'm editing a 10 minute video and it's just about like a YouTube documentary series. So throughout this video, you can have four different music shifts, but depending on the tone and mood that you want to set the video, the music might be a little different. But a good rule of thumb for the first music that you're going to be picking in the first 30 to 60 seconds should always be something very intense. This is because it gets the viewers really hooked on and guarantees the fact that they will actually stick past the one minute mark and actually watch the entire video. Next to really space out the assets and distribute the power evenly, you can have edits at all of these different points in the video. Now if you were to take a look at an example, do you notice that you can have some edited sequence back to back? This is actually a scenario that changes video to video. It isn't always a case like this and I'm just showing this as an example. Sometimes you might not have edited sequence that are back to back, but sometimes you might actually do. And this is just a judgment call that you really have to make on your own. This type of editing ensures that the tone and mood is set properly, assets aren't being forced in, and there is no power imbalance between assets. After going through that example and those three steps that I just mentioned, hopefully you have a better understanding on how to properly use assets. But other than that, this is the end of this YouTube video. I just wanted to go over some steps and tips that would help a lot of amateur video editors and YouTubers when editing their own YouTube videos. And of course, help them understand on how to actually properly use assets in the first place. So if you like what you heard in this video, 
why don't you give it a like, comment on it, and even share this video to maybe a fellow YouTuber or an amateur video editor. And of course, if you really want to learn more on how you can edit a YouTube video or learn more about growing a YouTube channel, why not subscribe to my YouTube channel so you can stay updated on when I upload the next time. Other than that, why don't you just take everything that I said in this YouTube video and just go kill it on YouTube?